Shanghai. It's day 19 of my 31 day challenge. And the question today is, what keeps you feel, okay, what makes you feel fully engaged and satisfied? Some activity that I do that keeps me fully engaged, my attention is able to be focused, and I enjoy it. Well, get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> Reading, I love to read. I remember being a young woman, a young girl actually, and I was an adept reader. I love to read anything and everything I could get my hands on. But I really love to read um, magazine articles that dealt with things to do with nature or science or things like that. So I was really fully engaged in that and I could read for hours. And I was, I loved going to the library at school. I would get as many books as I could get and I would sign them out and take them home. However, there was a series of books when I was a young girl, teenager actually, I think, a uh, girl guide maybe, or maybe even brownies. And that was the, the set of books, the series called Nancy Drew. Yeah, Nancy Drew, and then there was another set called The Hardy Boys. I read every single one of them. And when I had children, I bought a brand new set for them to let their children read. So I've read as many Harlequin romances as there is, I think. I probably missed a couple because there's been a lot, but Harlequin romance, it kinda, you, you put yourself into the story. And don't forget, I'm a small town girl. I grew up in a small town in an era where um, you, you grew up, you got married, you had children, you had a nine to five, your husband worked really hard, you had a nice little Oldsmobile, you know? So everything was like capiche, right? Well, it doesn't always turn out that way. So reading it, I was able to kind of put myself into those romance novels and I was able to pretend I was the person, the, the girl. I, I was able to actually envision it, a life like that. And so, you know, what can I say? I was a young girl, a young woman, and, and that was something that, yeah, I enjoyed. And I remember uh, signing, like even Harlequin Romances, that every chance I got, I would sign one out of the library. And uh, I think it was the library. I, I know I had, I read tons of them. And I remember, uh, you know, bedtime was like 9 o'clock, right? Like when you're a young girl, bedtime's like 9 o'clock, and I, I would read into the wee hours and I had I didn't have a flashlight because we didn't have them back then we, we, we never had one at least I don't know but I remember reading in the the moonlight coming through the window because I loved those books and I always thought you know someday I'm gonna grow up and that's gonna be me and I'm gonna have you know this amazing romance with this my knight in shiny armor he's gonna waltz in and he's gonna take me out of my misery and, and move me to a castle and everything's gonna be fine well it didn't necessarily turn out that way it didn't necessarily turn out that way I didn't need a few Prince Charmings but I think the horse fell in the mud you know what I'm saying anyway um, so yeah those were I get fully engaged in my reading Another thing I get fully engaged in is um, sketching. I love to sketch. I love to sketch the eyes. I love the eyes. I love the muscles. I love the sinewy muscles. I mean, following the, the shadowing and stuff like that. And I was really, really exceptional good, exceptionally good in high school in art class. I mean, I got, I think it was, I think one year I got 100%. And another year I got 97. So I was always very up on art. I loved art. And art ran in our family. My mother was creative. She was able to draw and sketch. She never utilized it, but I remember her doodling. And she was pretty good. She was pretty good. And my one of my brothers was like phenomenal. He could sketch like phenomenally. And I remember uh, back in the day, I think I would have been maybe, it was maybe in 64, 65, I truly remember this, yeah, I was like four or five years old, and I do remember him, we had a blank wall in our dining room, we didn't have a lot of furniture, we were low income, we didn't have a lot of furniture, but there was a blank wall, and I remember my mother, uh, my brother found a picture of a Chinese girl, and a covered, or a bridge, right? You know, the, the bridge where there's the cherry blossoms and there's a Chinese girl there, and you know what? He took that picture and he recreated it on that wall. <gasps> it was stunningly beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I can't believe when we left that 
that location that it was destroyed, the picture was destroyed. Like I wish I could have, I remember my mom taking pictures of it first and then it was, it was totally demolished. But my brother had talent. So it runs in the family. And it must run on my side of the family because I have, I do have um, granddaughters who are like phenomenal. Both of them are very, very artistic. I have um, an older granddaughter who like, she can look at a picture and look away and draw it. She's just like, I don't know, is that photograph photographic memory or something? But she's very creative. And like, I'm taking credit for that, okay? I'm taking credit for that. And I did a video one time that in actuality, you do inherit your mother's intelligence. Just, just saying, just saying, okay? Just saying, just putting it out there. Check it out, look it up on the internet, but I did research on it and it's true. You inherit a certain percentage, a larger percentage of your um, intelligence from your mother. Mm -hmm. And did you know? that you carry your, um, you actually carry your grandchildren's genes in your body as a grandmother. Uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. Well, of course, I'm your daughter, but, right? Because it goes to your daughter and then to your grandchildren, so, yeah. So I'm gonna see if I can find that link and post it down below, but those are two things that I absolutely get enthralled with, and I'm able to keep my focus, and I can do it for hours. I could draw and sketch and paint and like everything. Like I love to make dream catchers. You notice I have one there. I don't know if you can. So yeah, so I make I make tons of dream catchers. I love to uh, paint. I love to sculpt. I love to draw. I love to pencil sketch. All those type of things. All those. I've always, always loved it, and I absolutely love to read. Now, I'm thinking I haven't been lately because of, well, we have the internet, and, you know, you have free movies, and all sorts of stuff like that, right? And I need to get more active instead of, like, staying, um, staying parked in front of the television. So, I want to get more active. And so, I really haven't been focusing on watching movies or reading books or anything, but... You know, as we're going on into the winter, I think a best bet for me would be to uh, start reading again. So I am going to, I am going to, um, I'm trying to keep that little light circle from out, out from here. But anyway, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go back to the library and start withdrawing books again because I miss it. I, I truly do miss it. I, I miss having um, a rocking chair. Can you believe that? 63 years old and I'm thinking about a rocking chair. What the hell? Anyway, I had one when the kids were little. I had a little uh, wooden rocker. Now I seen one outside. Someone was throwing it out and I was thinking, geez, I should snafu that, clean it. But you know what? No. There's too many people that don't keep their places clean and so you're, you have to be scared of, you know, I'd have to disinfect it and I don't have time for that. But I would love to get one of those wood rockers that just kind of goes back and forth. And yeah, and get myself a pile of books. I'd love to have a bit of a library, but because I'm not sure where my life is headed, like I'm still focused on my health. Um, I do still have issues with my blood pressure and things like that. So, you know, I have to be very vigilant. And so I don't want to build up a massive amount of stuff that if anything happens to me that my children have to get rid of, right? So, and I've basically started to downsize. I've started to, you know, I'm coming to the end of that journey, and I know I am. I'm not an idiot. I know I know my time on this earth is, you know, I'm, I'm sure I could count it in calendar days, you know? I'm not saying it's going to happen now, but sooner than later, it will. It will happen eventually. So, I want to downsize. I want to get rid of the extra stuff and you know, if there was um, a community library, like, like here in the building, where I could, you know, take a couple of books and return a couple of books and like that. But like I said, you have to be very vigilant at what you're taking from when you're living in a big apartment, when you're living with a lot of people. You have to be careful what you're bringing in that, you know, might be infected with something, right? So, um, yeah, but I would love to have a few books if I had family members maybe that would trade off some books if they were into reading but I'm I'm not really sure if my granddaughters are into reading because they have a lot of uh, 
technology, right? So computers and TVs and stuff like that. But myself, I would like to get back into reading. I miss it. I do. I miss it. And I was extremely good in English, in spelling and communication and, and those type of um, things. And I'm kind of wondering why I didn't go into that uh, field as a young woman when I was starting my career. But other things pulled me in a, in a different direction. I mean, I never thought I'd be a heavy equipment operator. Like, when you're 16 and you're planning your future and you're talking to the guidance counselor, like, are you saying, okay, I want to be a truck driver? No. Well, not all of us are. Some maybe, some girls maybe. Maybe they're, you know, um, they have that wanderlust. And, but I didn't. I only went to the military for one specific reason, and that was because I was informed that if I didn't get a job, I couldn't live there. <laughs> so I got a job. Unfortunately, the job took me across the country. And I never really went back to that area permanently. I did go back after I got out of the military, and that's my husband and I met there, and we had children and, and things like that. So, you know, everything happens for a reason, right? Everything happens for a reason. But I do, I miss it, and I miss having my rocking chair. I'm on a rocking chair. So if I do ever end up going on that front porch in the country where I want to be, under that sky full of stars, I want a damn rocking chair. So what keeps me fully engaged? I love to shop. I love to shop for bohemian clothes. Now, I'm not saying clothes that are, are recently made. I'm looking for old clothes, clothes that were from the 50s, the 60s, and I want to mix and match them. And I've done that. I bought some harem pants. I bought some um, pattern pants that came from Indonesia, and I mixed and matched it with a, with a top. I went to the store and there was a lady my age walking down the street and she says to me, she said, oh, I love that outfit, where did you get it? I said, well, we got it from here and I got that from there and I got the shoes. Every single solitary thing that I was wearing was from a different charity shop. And I never even realized it until me and that lady had that conversation. So that's something that can keep me engaged for hours. I can go to Value Village and I can shop without buying anything for hours and hours and hours. And the worst part is, is that I want to try everything on. Now, I remember during um, the epidemic, we weren't allowed to try clothes on, so we weren't allowed to go into the change rooms. Now, I don't know if they've changed it, because it's been a while since I've been there. But I used to love that. I would pick out a bunch of outfits and mix and match and go in the change room and check it out, you know, check out check what I look like and if I liked it, if I liked the colors, right? So it's got to be something bright or patterned. But I remember being in my 20s and picking very kind of like subdued colors, right? And, uh, like, and, and plus that, a lot of black, a lot of black. There were a lot of black. So now this, I think, is one of the only black shirts I have. And it's like a muscle shirt. And what I do is I wear it when I do my exercises. But I finished my afternoon sit-ups. I did 25 sit-ups. Just now, I did 30, uh, 30 in the morning, and I did 25 now. 55 sit-ups at the age of 63. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. At least for me, it's pretty good. But I am going to try to do a little bit more and some pump some push-ups up. But I do wear this for my exercising. So I don't have a lot of black clothes. I have a lot of colors. I like oranges. I like reds. I like... Uh, a bright blues, I like neon colors. I have a neon orange. Yeah. I have a couple of them. I have a couple of them. And I remember going to, um, oh, it was years ago because I don't eat fast food anymore, but at that time I did. And I was getting a coffee from, I think it's, uh, it's a fast food place. It's Wendy's or McDonald's. And there was an elderly fella in there. And I'm elderly now, right? But this was like maybe five, six years ago. No, it was before. So about eight years ago. And uh, I was wearing this bright neon orange shirt. And I remember sitting down with my coffee in one of the booths. And this guy came walking by and he said, Oh my goodness, lady, that's your color. I was like, well, oh, thanks. You know? And it was a shirt I got from a thrift store. So, yeah, when I go shopping, if I go to a thrift store, listen, that keeps me engaged. And when I leave there, even when I'm looking at the clothes, I'm fully involved. And I absolutely and totally satisfied. There hasn't been anything that I got from a thrift store that I have 
taken that. So that's the end of question 19 of my 31 day challenge. So I shall see you on day 20 and we'll see what that question is. The good work, we will. Bye.